The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorneys. Play to win, banksjones.com. The Dave Hooker Show. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Objective insight, expertise, top guest. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off the Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Also available on offthehooksports.com. I compute and obey. Now to Dave Hooker. Ready. Boy, we are absolutely loaded up as spring camp comes to a close. What do we learn about the balls in spring practice? Also, as it turns out, Arkansas fans do not like me and do not like Caleb Calhoun. We will discuss why on the program today as well. Does Danny White like making splashes maybe a little too much as compared to winning championships? Kentucky with a hire that reminds me so much of Lane Kiffin, and we'll get into that. It's really tough to put into words, and it's not the the hiring of Lane Kiffin. It's that the timing of the departure left you in a total mess, and that was the case with John Calipari, and that was the case with Lane Kiffin. So you go from your first two or three options are probably already tied down with a contract. Your eight, nine, ten or options are probably tied down with a contract. You end up with Mark Pope. This day in Tennessee sports history, we have a tie to OJ who, by the way, is no longer with us. So good news, it's safer to be in the state of California and a waiter on this day than it was <laughs> a couple of days ago. Uh, we'll also discuss Jonas Adu entering the transfer portal, and we'll have a complete recap of spring practice. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, O.J. Simpson passing away at the ripe old age of it's about damn time. Sorry, Caleb. He murdered people. I have no empathy for that man. I hope you're doing well. Fantastic haircut, by the way. Well, did you go to OJ's Barber Shop where they slash hair and prices? <laughs> no, and I'm going to take a stab at a few OJ jokes today, too. But uh, what I will say is... And I want, I want everybody to know, we're doing that to remind everybody what a terrible person he was and that he took two lives. And uh, there we go. It's not to make fun of the fact that he got away with it and kind of didn't, which is good. Yes, and but. I got my hair cut because an Arkansas fan said I look like Stefan from SNL, and it just really hurt my feelings, guys. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna be in my underwear crying in my room after this show. It just was everything in me. It just took so much effort to get up and do the show this morning because I was so low on my self-esteem. Okay, it is funny that you say that because you do look a little bit like Stefan from SNL. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't to this point. And if you think that Caleb looks a little like Stefan from SNL, does he? Do I look like Stefan? Uh, look at yourself in the video and tell me you don't. Do I look like Stefan? First of all, Stefan didn't even have facial hair, guys. Come on. <laughs> okay, so does Caleb look like Stefan from SNL? Yes, no doubt is one option uh sort of and then no to, not at all and i guarantee you that i win this this poll question as we started off today sort of and then no way there you go so we get rolling now it's today's tough question it's brought to you by our good friends at the hemp house how about we do that right now today's tough question is now today's tough question Take a side. Take a stand. The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. Gosh. All right. So now we have people saying that OJ's kid actually did it, that he, OJ took the heat to protect his child. I'm not doing this. He did it. With Caleb Calhoun, I'm Dave Hooker. Thoughts on uh, Caleb Calhoun? Our poll question today is, does Caleb look like Stefan from SNL? The answers are a lot, a little. Those are the only two that really matter, and not at all. 
But as I ask a serious today's tough question, and it's brought to you by our good friends at the Hemp House. I'll tell you more about them. But first, today's tough question. Does Danny White have a problem hiring splash over championships? Explain yourself, Caleb Calhoun, because I thought that you were leading me down that road a couple of days ago when you said Danny White liked the hires that have immediate impacts. I thought that's the road you were going down, the one I believe you're about to go down now, but you surprised me, which is a good thing. So, yes, when you ask me that question, I think he has a problem hiring splash over championships, and I will give you this comparison and tell me if I'm crazy. Had he had, let's say, somewhere around the time frame, a Gus Malzahn, a guy who had run an incredible offense in Arkansas, or a Nick Saban who had been at Michigan State and been okay. But the Saban guy is going to have to build you up over time. That Malzahn guy might have success right away because he's got the exciting offense. I think Tennessee fans should be concerned that White would take the flashy hire. No, now, nothing's been proven yet to that to that extent. Josh Heupel may end up being every bit as good as Nick Saban. But right now, I think it's a very fair concern, and I'm glad you brought it up. Yes, and I did some research on Danny White's track record. And again, he's had very good success at programs. No national championships, though. I'm sorry, UCF fans, that 2017 undefeated season in which you hung a national championship banner in college football does not count. You didn't win the national title. Is that is that fair to say? They, they, like, that's oh, ridiculous. absolutely. No, that doesn't count. That's not even a factor in this conversation. Yes. I give them credit for that team going undefeated and even beating Auburn in the, um, I forget the bowl it was. It was a New Year's Six Bowl. But yeah, they didn't win a national title. Danny White has consistently hired fun brands of whatever sport he's hiring for and what i mean by that is well and let me back you for a second because he went out of his way on a local station in knoxville and at the press conference to say you know that thing you like in neyland stadium where they get up and down the field or that's what you're going to see with the women's basketball program he went out of his way to say that that was a talking point caleb no question that stood out to me too and it's funny you say that because when he hired josh heupel three years ago he said it with josh heupel he said I know we need more. All I know everybody likes offense and Josh Heupel runs a fun brand of football. You can't get any better than that with Josh Heupel. That's what he said. He didn't say championships. He said Josh Heupel runs a fun brand of football. He did say championships with Kim Caldwell, but you're right. He specifically said she runs a fun brand of basketball. You know who else runs a fun brand of basketball? Nate Oates, who Danny White hired. You know yes. who has zero national championships right now at this moment? Nate Oates. You know who else runs a fun brand of the sport they coach? Scott Frost. You know who got fired at Nebraska after they didn't have Florida athletes to run that fun brand? Scott Frost. I've always believed, Dave, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, that coaches who run a, like, that are great game planners who run a very intelligent system, not necessarily pro style coaches, but run like a very, you know, kind of cutting edge system, that does win you a lot of games. I haven't seen a lot of proof that that wins you championships, though. I mean, we, we talk about it all the time. C. Spurrier had the most fun brand of football. He backed into his only national title. He didn't win any other national title. That, that was a lucky national title that he got. No, nope, I agree. Uh, so go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button like now. And subscribe if you haven't to this point. We certainly appreciate you getting on board. So I'll ask you this question. Do you worry that it's more about splash than it is championships? Uh, so let me ask you that question because i think it is a fair one i think if you looked at josh heupel and you're danny white and you think i'm 50 percent certain he's going to succeed whereas you're maybe 45 percent certain another guy is going to succeed or maybe slightly more certain you're going to take the guy with the exciting offense it's why i say and i've always used this saying with high school coaches always fear the good looking coaches because the good-looking coaches most oftentimes are the ones that win a press conference and don't win at a high level.
that is just an absolute fact. The Hemp House, it's a fact that they're the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Use the promo code HOOK for 10% off. 10% off. Promo code HOOK for 10% off. I will say this, though. At least he doesn't just try to talking about Danny White when the press conference in terms of you could just hire a name to win the press conference. Let's take John Gruden, for instance. Now, that was always obscene. That was never going to happen. However, had it happened, we had no reason to believe he would be a great college coach. He may have been very average. I don't know that. He was a good NFL coach, but... There's questions about his NFL success, too, by the way, about right. why he but was I that good. But I give Danny White credit for not uh, not getting caught up in a guy that might give you a little bit more pub. He doesn't care that you don't know who Josh Heupel is. He doesn't care that you don't know who the new women's basketball coach is. That That's not – he creates some – excitement but it's not at the behest of going and getting somebody that has a name that you pay more money to that may be beyond their best years fair exactly no totally agree and he does he, he wants to win you over with the fun brand of the sport that they're coaching at the time so he he hired let's think about back when he hired josh heupel at ucf yes he struck gold at ucf but why did he hire josh heupel at ucf what was josh heupel he was putting up record offenses at Missouri. Now it wasn't like Missouri was, they went like seven and six hypos last year, but they were averaging over 400 yards. And Danny White said, Hey, a coach that averages over 400 yards, get him at UCF. He'll put butts in the seat. I think one of the things Danny White does, and I don't know if you need to do this at Tennessee or not. He very much approaches hiring as if he's at a, shall we say maybe a little bit of a lesser school because if you're at a ucf you do need to hire for splash and entertainment right because that's going to be what sells tickets and you got to sell tickets. Point. and and i think the latest hire probably proves that the campbell hire probably proves that that he he wants value in that hire it's almost the nfl comparison of getting that rookie quarterback on a rookie deal isn't it except you yeah don't have those it, yeah i mean he fit I think he I think he thinks he got a good deal in Josh Heupel, not just a good coach, but a good deal. I think he felt feels like he's got a good deal in Barnes. I think he feels like he's got a good deal now with the women's basketball coach as well. It's like in you know the best I could say is like it's like in the NBA where you know you he's not going to try to steal a headline by hiring a name coach. It won't work out like when the Knicks hired Phil Jackson as general manager, most headline stealing move of all time. Thank you. That is but, a very that is a very very good example. Yes, exactly. But he will do something like, you know, if he were an NBA executive, he'd take Allen Iverson on his team. Now, Allen Iverson's never going to win you a championship, ever. He can't win a championship. He, he is way too much of a black hole of a player. He's ball hog, just too many issues. But he was going to put people in the seats with his, with his play, wasn't he? Because he was going to be so much fun to watch. Yeah, but I'm going to disagree with you on the win you a championship. I think he could have. I think he had nothing. But that's a, that's a conversation for another day. So go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you have it to this point and uh, give me give me your thoughts. Do you worry that Danny White is too splashy in some of his hires that they're not proven guys? Well, the simple fact is he didn't have that opportunity with a women's basketball coach because the proven cats aren't going anywhere. The Mulkies, the Ariemas of the world, uh, the Don Staley's of the world. So then perhaps you have a Gottlieb type, but there's a pretty big drop off after maybe two or three walls at Kentucky that you might have that you do have to start thinking like you're a smaller school and get an up and coming uh, comer. You've got to do it. Yeah, you do. That That's absolutely necessary. And I think particularly with women's basketball with look, let's call it what it is, guys. The Lady Vols were running a boring brand of basketball and the Lady Vol contingency that I've criticized were insisted that you have to stick with this brand, which is a sh terrible brand. OK, so I'm sorry. Danny White had to make a move and it was it, it was also, by the way, kind of similar. I'll be honest, Dave. 2020 with Jeremy Pruitt, there was some fan apathy like I had never seen with Tennessee with the way they played. So I, I think that quite honestly, Danny White made, he made a splash hire 
or he makes splash hires, I'm not sure that's going to translate to championships for Tennessee. And by the way, Tennessee, I think overall Directors Cup Athletics right now is fifth. But when's the last time they actually brought home hardware in any sport? No, I mean, I think you have to ask yourself if Danny White as a whole, and people want to ask this about Josh Heupel, is he a guy that builds a program to a point and then can he win a championship? Don't you have to ask that about Danny Heupel as well? I'm sorry, about Danny White as well? You you do right now. Now, again, he's he's won conference championships at lower levels. Scott Frost and Josh Heupel both won American titles and both had undefeated regular seasons. That's the max of what's possible at that lower level. So he did reach the max. But can he reach the max of what's possible at the max level with these hires? This is kind of, I don't like to do the conspiracy thing because you know how sometimes people try to float a conspiracy, but they don't want to get caught. They'll be like, I'm just asking questions. But I am just asking questions here. I'm just no, wondering. You are just asking you... questions. And you know, it's, at some point, you have to ask your, yourself a question if, if you're a Tennessee fan is – is Danny Watt hiring guys that Arkansas could have hired? Because the simple fact is anybody can go hire a Sam Pittman, but can you hire somebody that's going to be an up and coming great coach and win championships? You can have your Sam Pittman's all day long. Those guys are out there, but if you want to be relevant and you want to be a program that matters, you better hire somebody better than a Sam Pittman. You better hire somebody better than a Bobby Petrino, the guys you've hired over the years. And Arkansas has had that struggle. You don't want to be an Arkansas, certainly not portions of the program brought to you by our good friends at BetUS. BetUS, Caleb with a nice new haircut, brought to you by our friends where you get 125% bonus on your first three deposits. That's BetUS. Hit the like and subscribe button now. America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. All right, so let's get to this, Caleb, as we have determined that there's reason to be concerned about Danny Watt being a splash hire guy. But we don't have enough info yet for that to be the case. Now... This all comes from making hires, and credit Arkansas for making a splash hire. They did in John Calipari, and credit them for getting that done. If if they had any sort of organizational skills in football, they would have a more relevant football program, not to belabor Arkansas football, because they are doing the best they can. <laughs> they're trying really what? hard out there. They're in trying their darndest. All right, so Mark Pope, just keep trying. Keep working at it. Keep pushing. Is it pulling that rope? Is it pushing? In case you all don't know, there's a bunch of people on Twitter that's making fun of us that are Arkansas fans because uh, I've, I've because they think it's totally normal to have a press conference. It's like a starting lineup. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was ready for that Michael Buffer. And now, <laughs> coming in. At six foot five, 220 pounds from the University of Kentucky with more hair gel than you can possibly imagine. John Calla. If you could, I would take two Perry. <laughs> My gosh, that was awful. That was your fan. I mean, that was that was your it was college. a you said it right. It was a you middle school pep together. rally. Your college put that together and you're mad at me, Arkansas fans? <laughs> your school put it together. They did that. Do we want to play it again? Because I didn't do it. I, I didn't, didn't have, I, I didn't, didn't put that together, Caleb. I didn't put together the John Calipari introduction I also, pregame ceremony. I didn't do it. I also didn't prop up John Calipari by naming a bunch of players who never won a national championship playing for John Calipari. All of them underachieved when they played for John Calipari. And, and that's who Arkansas touted to say, look, these guys committed to John Calipari, and so we're going to be good too, even though John Calipari never won with any of them. Right. That was how, that, that, that's how the Arkansas brain worked, guys, in this yes. one. <laughs> so we got to come back a uh, uh, rocky flop. That's the best. Uh, come on, you can do better than that. Oh, get wow, you. that's so original. By the way, get your, we, we – Get your we, Arkansas we fans. Hey, and I'll let you know. 
this happens to be a day in which we are ripping several programs. It's not always the case. We give uh, big time love to programs as well. And uh, now we're going to turn to Kentucky because I think that talking about Kentucky having a total fiasco in the most important sport other than horse racing in that state is more entertaining than talking about Tennessee's second string linebackers, which we're going to do later in the program. But as for now, how bad of a hire is Mark Pope for real? I was touting Rick Patino, who this just in may be the best coach of my generation. And instead they go with Mark Pope. Mark Pope. Who I mean, they they hired a guy because he played at Kentucky under Rick Patino. Like that's what it feels like they did. Um he did play and win a national championship playing for them in 95, 96, um, after he had transferred from Washington. But um, Mark Pope has been at BYU for four years now, uh, five years, excuse me, and has never won an NCAA tournament game, made two NCAA tournament appearances. And that is who Kentucky hired. His The most number of wins he has in a season is 24. 24. By the way, a part of me, like, I want to joke, but I got to be honest, Dave. I feel really bad for Kentucky fans on this. Like, I do I too, awful. but I don't because they're the worst. All right, it's Pope of Palooza. Travis is telling me that Pope's video is so. Oh cringy. yeah, can we can we play the video? Uh, yeah, this, let's this play is... the video. Who released that thing? If it's the University of Kentucky, then it's no Tristan. This was sent, and somehow Tristan Ferris from uh of S at Sea of Blue SB Nation got a hold of it. Uh, but so I'm gonna share it. Um, well, this has and... got to be. Uh, so this, are we gonna get in trouble with the YouTube, or is this the public? No, um, everybody's sharing it right now on Twitter, oh, and so no. it's 22 so this seconds. Him talk, this is just him talking to the video. All right, let's let's play this. And let's see just have some fun. Uh, yes, uh, this looks like no fun at all. As a matter of way, as a matter of fact, it looks like a, a way to get arrested if you're Mark Pope. <laughs> um, so, do you want to go ahead and hit play on this? Yep, let's go. It's impossible for me to describe how much I love this university, my teammates, and you fans. But I'm gonna try. Oh no. Oh no. C A T S Cats Cats Oh Cats. no. Like you're on our I love you. If you're on our <laughs> audio platform, they uh, Kentucky <laughs> just hired Shane Beamer as its Wait. next coach. Uh he go for our audio platform, he strips down to his Kentucky uh, jersey, jersey, Kentucky Jersey back in the day, and he um, he spells cats, which is not but a wait, difficult word to spell. Did you notice the BYU in the background because he was at BYU Stadium? Wait, 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 pull it up again because Travis yeah. pointed out to wait, 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 pull it up again. Rick Terry <laughs> Jewelry Design, they want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals, a Tennessee tradition? RickTerryJewelry.com, RickTerryJewelry.com. Congratulations, Dave Leverton. You won the Fire Opals. Ian's <laughs> Bunner for the 1998 National Championship team. You also won our Celebrity Challenge. All right. So is he in front of BYU stuff? And did he expect yes. people not? He is in front of BYU. <laughs> Why is he in front of BYU? It says BYU basketball, and he's wearing a Kentucky jersey. But oh my why? God, this is did great. He, they just hire him, and he's in that area? No, he coaches at BYU. Okay, so but, but do he, was, it, he went to the BYU another, gym against, to shoot this but video. Do it another wall. Go to high school. This is worse than opportunity is nowhere. This is worse than opportunity is it's nowhere. It's on par. Opportunity is nowhere is kind of of its own accord. But it is <laughs> it is on par. Just. Play it again. Oh my God. Just and listen, everybody will listen uh, because it's just unbelievable and it's great. And it's brought to you by our good buddy Don Self. He's your State Farm agent that would tell you not to do this type of commercial. He's a customer service centered agent because customer service still matters. I know everybody wants the best prices, but DonSelf.net, DonSelf.net. And if he's not your correct agent uh, for State Farm, he'll funnel you there. He's been there for forty years. And he brings you Mark Pope, Kentucky's newest basketball. It's coach. impossible for me to describe how much I love this university, Difficult. my teammates, and you fans. But I'm going to try. By taking his clothes off. C A T S. Cats. 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 Yeah, I love you. That is 
is so. Wow. It, all right, so Dave, let's finish this. I, I, I got mine, but I, and I already tweeted it out in case you already saw it. But you got to give me yours. Finish this sentence. Mark Ho Mark Pope is who you hire when blank. Mark Pope is who you hire when everybody else says no. Okay, I got a better one, but that's a good one. You're right. It is Mark Pope you is my best friend in high school's girlfriend's best friend that couldn't find a date to prom either. Mark Pope is who you hire when your like original choice got fired for spending school money on bringing strippers to your hotel room while at a golf tournament in Pensacola. It's Mike Price. Mark, no, after Mike Price. Mark Pope is who you hire because you had to fire the coach who spent money on strippers at a golf tournament in Pensacola. He's, He's Mike such Shula. a legendarily bad hire. And PJ booked out. Uh, you, you said y'all are trash. So I'm curious, are you a Kentucky fan or not? Because if you're a Kentucky fan, I would Don't absolutely... blame us. I feel bad for you, PJ. If you no, want. I would love to hear from you. Because seriously, this is the most embarrassing hire that I perhaps have ever seen. Because you have, th this is Dooley level. And Dooley, I thought, was a horrible hire. You and I differ on that, but I thought losing record at Law Tech, blah, blah, blah. But th th this is a hire that screams to me desperation, and I got to do the exact opposite of what the previous coach did. This guy has to be beloved, right? He's their buzz. Elias, yes, he's their buzz, except he was actually better at basketball, and he may or may not have known Michael Jordan. That's true. He wasn't Michael Jordan's roommate, guys. You can't say yeah, he was there. He may or may have not been in Michael Jordan's third wedding. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I thought he's only had two. It's debatable. It depends who um, you And ask. by the way, I thought Michael Jordan was in his wedding. Are we sure he was in Michael Jordan's wedding? I don't know. He's had a few, I would imagine. Uh, Apex Apparel Group. Uh, call. I mean, you've got to call. 15% off your first order. Uh, they They did this fantastic tri-star hats company shirt that if you're watching on youtube it's just unbelievable go right down there and call tyler get 15 percent off your first order for your company 865-919-3001 865-919-3001 or go to your apex apparel.com your apex apparel.com 15 percent off your first order just for mentioning off the hook sports it just stuns me stuns me that they couldn't have gotten a better name. Did you honest to goodness know 48 hours ago that Pope, the former Kentucky player, was even in coaching? I had no idea who Mark Pope was. <laughs> I didn't know who Mark Pope was. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I I, 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 I study as much as I can. I'm, we're obviously more in the college football world. Uh, we stick with uh, SEC basketball a lot. I, 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 I didn't know that this guy was coaching this is this is laughable 24 wins is your max this is you know who actually is, you know what it actually reminds me of I, I, this is the best example dave you know who it's the most reminiscent of mm -hmm. it's reminiscent of who tennessee just fired kelly harper for the lady vols like her track record is very similar to mark pope's track record before he was hired at but you're getting State. hired with a blue blood I mean, yeah, you're, getting by, you're getting hired by a blue blood. This is not the job where you go figure things out. And listen, uh, Arkansas, n saying no comment, I guess is his name. Pope is a hell of a hire. Well, I was taught that if your opponents think you've made a hell of a hire, then you have not made a hell of a hire. Then you made a really bad, bad hire. Yes, that's exactly really? what it is. It was a bad, bad hire. And... I think it's very interesting that you have an Arkansas fan who suddenly comes out of left field and defends the Pope hire. You know it's a terrible hire. You know that you'd rather have John Calipari, I think. Do you know that John Calipari is not the guy that's going to be showing up at golf functions in five years? He's not going to be wearing red and be around campus. He's probably not even going to be on at your school. You have officially reached the point of Patino where you have crested the hill and you're coming down. Now, I would have hired Patino over Pope had I been in Kentucky, but that is exactly where John Calipari is. Does he really want to bust it and go recruit as hard as he has? Sorry, that's who you're getting. And don't expect to be getting the same guy who almost won a championship at Memphis, who did win the championship at Kentucky because he had all the insight 
to be able to do that. And he still just won one title. So I know Arkansas is excited right now, but will they be excited in five years, Caleb? May, you know, it'll be hard to say that because I feel like Arkansas, I think they downgraded their coach from Eric Musselman to John Calipari. Mm -hmm. I think Eric Musselman was met, more meant for this era, even with the down year this past year. Kentucky and Arkansas both downgraded coaches, honestly. And that's what's so funny. And I, I got I to gotta give, gotta give my man Colton a shout out. Mark Pope is who you hire when you need a coach for a One Tree Hill episode. Yes. Yes. One I don't Tree know Hill what One Dawson. Tree Hill is. Is that a Bobby it was a two thousand. It was a two, It was the 2000s version of Dawson's Creek. You know those teen shows that like everything's so serious about what they're doing in high school and they play that serious music and they're like, oh my God, we're in high school and our lives are so important and it's, it's so dramatic. Very, it's very and serious. yes, yes, that that was the One Tree Hill was that of the 2000s. Um, that, and then Gossip Girl was that too. John, Mark Pope is that. Is that John it? Calipari or Jimbo Fisher, who stole more money? Brother Bill says, oh, uh, Dave, you're really rocking a lightning bolt undershirt. Uh, no, it's actually a running T-shirt, and it probably wouldn't hurt for you to get your BMI checked as well there, Bill. Stay tuned with Caleb <laughs> Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. This is a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Hit like and subscribe, especially you, Bill. Ford Mustang 5.0 GT, 33540, 2021 GMC, Sierra 1500 Denali 4x4, 46980, 2022 Ford Expedition, King Ranch 4x4, 67550. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. Sports Treasures in North Knoxville is one of the South's largest sports cards and memorabilia dealers featuring over 10 million sports cards from vintage to modern. Sports Treasures carries a full line of hobby boxes, singles, autographed memorabilia, tennis evolved collectibles, fan cave decorations, and so much more. See a museum full of collectibles at Sports Treasures, 4819 North Broadway in Fountain City, and Sports Treasures on Facebook. Sports Treasures, where the real sports fan goes to shop. Have you seen the latest TriStar Hats Co. product? TriStar Hats Co., what's that? You know, those really cool hats, shirts, tumblers, and even license plates with three stars like the official Tennessee flag and stripes like the American flag. Pretty patriotic if you ask me. Ah, I got you. Seen those. Those are cool. Where can I get them? Simple. TriStarHatsCo.com. And if you order now, there's 10% on any order $50 or more. Plus, use the promo code HOOKED. With the promo code HOOKED, you get 10% off. That's HOOKED. And don't forget free shipping with any order over 50 bucks. Stock up at TriStarHatsCo.com. That's TriStarHatsCo.com. There are plenty of wannabes out there, so make sure you go to TriStarHatsCo.com for the best quality and customer service. Will do, and I'll be sure to use the promo code HOOKED. That's HOOKED when I do to save an additional 10% off. TriStarHatsCo.com. TriStar Hats Co. is a trademark of TriStar Hats Co. LLC. Any use without express written consent is prohibited. Now in its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. Joe Newbert Collision Center. Okay, I have to be honest. The Arkansas comments are so funny that I'm having trouble focusing. We are going to be <laughs> here. Welcome back. This game is coming up, baby. It's the Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. Um, who's this guy? Hello, wizard! The Dave Hooker Show, Ooh. a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave Hooker. Somebody on Twitter has the Twitter name Bobby P. Redemption Center. The Bobby <laughs> Petrino Redemption Season. I'm sorry, season. This is the year that Bobby Petrino turns it all around. And, uh, wow, we have a ton of Arkansas fans on the Twitter now. He's probably going to sure. turn an intern around, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's got jokes. Uh, Elias noticed that. All right, so can we work in? All right, I got one. So can we work in an OJ before we get to who stole the most money? Is it Jimbo Fisher or John Calipari? So uh, can we work in an OJ and Arkansas joke at the same time? I bet this joke's going to kill it. 
<laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> With my lightning shirt on. Um, it, it, here, here's 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 the joke. So tell me what you think of this. Um, why didn't OJ commit his crimes in Fayetteville? Why? Because you can't pay for cutlery in chickens and pies. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Get it? They're still using the barter system. <laughs> oh Lord. That's uh See? that's you're not loving it. You're not loving it, but that's where all you Arkansas fans. Now, well, are. it's funny you say that because Arkansas is one of the states in the country that uh just speaking politically real quick, they have a balanced budget amendment, meaning every budget has to be balanced every year at Arkansas, so you can't run a debt at all. And it's like, well, you can't run a debt if you don't have any money, right? If you just barter. <laughs> Yeah. So, oh uh, yeah, that fell flat too. But no, that, that's, that's just good. It's good. You worked on it. I can appreciate that. All right. So for all you Arkansas fans out there, this one's. Uh, By the way, you. Hot Springs is awesome. I got to give you all that. Hot Springs? What is that? That's in Arkansas. You never been to Hot Springs? No. Do you go like in a spring, like a hot spring outside? It's a it's a resort place in Arkansas. I know a lot about it because I'm actually from Memphis, and it's basically so, yeah, it's a resort city in the state of Arkansas. Basically, um, it's it's up in the mountains. Um, so and, you get in yeah. the springs, but they're just hot springs. Like they've got some of those around Asheville, right? That's disgusting. You realize that? It's just you're gonna it's you're gonna have all kinds of stuff. it's natural lakes off the rivers in the mountains okay uh, it's, before, it's, before you it's, know it you're in those i, I gotta be honest i got before you know it you're in that and you're another arkansas uh, inbred scenario you don't want that what the <laughs> what was he thinking release the hounds the dave hooker show k k k keep cool a presentation of off the hook sports.com i would think we could just lay out flat numbers but apparently it's not that easy. John Calipari, Jimbo Fisher, who stole the most money from their school? Don't you just have the flat numbers? Can't we just throw those out there, Caleb? Well, John Calipari at Kentucky, well, his his contract at Arkansas is $7 million a year, five years. That's what it's starting at. His contract at Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken, was... Um, Oh, oh, the base salary is actually a slightly less uh, overall, slightly less than eight and a half million if if everything goes well. But it's, he was making over nine million, I believe, at Kentucky. Actually, close to ten million at Kentucky. So, in terms of that, I, I I think Jimbo Fisher was making more money. So you could say Jimbo Fisher stole more money in that regard. Um, but you got but a championship with Calipari. You got a championship with Calipari. To me, the Jimbo Fisher thing was completely Ocean's Eleven. They walked out of there with every bit of the cash that they could have. They didn't leave anything. They didn't even clean up on the way out. Yeah, I mean, at least Calipari won a championship, so he kind of did a little something while he was there. Jimbo Fisher just walked into the room, said, may I have your $100 million? And then I'm going to step out with about 38 of it. What, unfulfilled? Yes, pretty much. Um or but 68. I'm, was it was it I, maybe more than that? Boundless moving from their two hour minimum to turnkey operations. They've got you covered. Boundless moving in East Tennessee and Charlotte. That's boundless moving. I'm sorry to interrupt. You were going to say, I'm going to say John Calipari stole more money though, because and here's why John Calipari is 12 years removed from a national title and just got another job that's still paying him a top 10 salary in college basketball. Yeah, but he got a job. At Arkansas, and they'll hire any idiot to work there. <laughs> I'm just saying that Sorry, John Arkansas Calip fans, you all started it. Okay, so uh, Arkansas, I mean, John Calipari, this would be like if Jimbo Fisher got fired by Texas A&M and, and, and Arkansas hired him. Th this would be like that, okay? It, because of that, John Calipari is stealing more money. Now, I will say this, to draw more fair parallels, you can maybe say John Calipari going to Arkansas is more like when Jimbo Fisher left Florida State for Texas A&M because I don't I think that was a mutual neither side liked each other at that point even though he had won a national title but Jimbo Fisher was 5 years removed from a national title when he left to go to Texas A&M. John Calipari is 12 years removed from a national title. He's 5 years removed from making it to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. And 
That's who Arkansas just gave a contract to. And apparently, according to reports, they are on the hook for 75% of his buyout of his remaining base salary if he's fired for convenience. Wow. So he's still so got a pretty darn good buyout. I don't understand the buyout. I don't understand why you had to do that. And how much of the buyout did they have to pay? Has that been reported? The show represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or when it comes to personal injury, Banks and Jones. Banks and Jones? Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks and Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones, led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banksandjones.com. All right, so what was the buyout? Was so how to leave because his base salary is seven million, and then when you include a one million dollar signing bonus, retention bonus of five hundred thousand each year, he basically makes eight point five million. They have to pay seventy five percent of his remaining salary, what would be on his contract. So if my math is correct, they're going to owe him a little over six million for however many years is left per year for however yeah, many years is left only, on his they contract. They don't owe him; they owe the school. No, I'm saying if 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 they fired Calipari. Okay, but what I want to know is how much. Oh, what Arkansas you want to know is how much. Get, 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 get Calipari. Calipari would owe. This is crazy. He would owe. So they would owe him up, like upwards of over 20 something million. He would owe them 6 million to buy out his contract and accept another job. Okay, so they had to pay the 6 million. So basically, they paid the 6 million. They paid this. Oh, no, I, no, I'm, no. You're asking the 6 million for Kentucky, what they had to pay Kentucky. Uh, that's what you're asking. Right. I didn't. I didn't. So oh, Arkansas I didn't know that. Six million dollars to Kentucky to hire him, right? That sounds about right. I don't think John Calipari had a buyout if he left Kentucky because he had a lifetime. I, I could be wrong on that. I mean, um, those things can be all over the map, so you might be right. But I'm just curious what Arkansas had to pay him all in all to keep him or to to get him to take the court for one incredibly bad press conference. Just incredibly bad. I mean, you can't like that if you're an Arkansas fan. Does yes, that embarrass yes. you? Calipari had a zero dollar buyout he left kentucky for free all right sorry kentucky <laughs> fans you're you got played the, you're gonna get the spotlight of stupidity it was on arkansas for a while now you get it newbert collision center for over 50 years newbert collision center is east tennessee's best choice for quality repair and fantastic customer service joe newbert collision.com joe newbert collision.com that is unfathomable to me, a guy that has shown he has very little loyalty, how you would write that into his contract based off one championship. You win three championships, maybe that's a discussion. But to not have a buyout in Arkansas, I bet Arkansas was stunned whenever it was. Whenever Maybe it was two months ago and they started pushing Musselman out the door a little bit. Whenever they decided, or if it was two days ago, that they liked Calipari, I bet they were stunned to find out he had no buyout, Caleb. I mean, they probably knew when the contract was, because this was public info when it was signed. Well, yeah, when, ago, when, I, yeah, when they decided that they wanted Calipari and they did their due diligence, whenever that was, whether it's the contract yeah, you're right. signed or what, you had to be like, oh, Leanna, he doesn't have a buyout to go hire him? This is why Calipari is the one stealing the most money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean. You just answered your own question with that and probably made me change my mind. Uh, a little bit because to walk out of there with no buyout is like that i mean that that part is a deal for arkansas i give it to you but now arkansas i mean calipari's on the hook for six million if he leaves arkansas so like what happens if another school cali i mean again it's it's not much to pay a six million dollar buyout for a coach that you're going to hire away and no so, and if a guy wants to leave a six million dollars isn't going to stop him and it's not going to stop arkansas from hiring him hiring him if i just thought it would have been a little bit more as much as they had uh, but they also have to pay it, the, the arkansas still has to pay 75 percent of his remaining base salary if he's fired so we're talking if, if if i mean theoretically you get at least three years but say he gets three years well they would still owe a buyout in the tens of millions if they fired him after three years well yeah but that's that's common i mean it's usually about 
ten percent of what comes on the flip side. Like for instance, this may surprise you, but Lane Kiffin's buyout I think was three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Southern yeah. Cal had to pay that. I mean, that was practically. Well, that was just Lane Kiffin got the best, sweetest deal in the world when he was hired at Tennessee. Yeah, but and... isn't John Calipari kind of like that? Aren't there some similarities there? I mean, I mean, I see some some similarities there. The difference being, and once got a title, but they're. I can see those two kicking it in the hot tub. Here, you know, the best thing about dynasty pools and spas is that they've got it all taken care of. What does that mean? Well, you stop by their showroom and check out their fantastic selection of top notch spas in that showroom in Athens. Make your pick and get ready because dynasty pools and spas delivers within 125 miles of that location in Athens, that fantastic showroom. They've got the cover, the cover lifts, steps, chemicals, and everything you need delivery at no extra charge. That just down the road in Athens, you pick the spa you want and it'll be there for you. Oftentimes discounted with military and first responders discounts, also blemish models, or just mention off the hook sports. That's off the hook sports for $500 off. There's a discount for you on spas made right here in East Tennessee. Support local. Dynasty Pools and Spas also has the best chemicals for you and your spa and your pool. No fillers, just the chemicals made right here in East Tennessee. Support local. Dynasty Pools and Spas, $500 off if you mention Off the Hook Sports. $500 off if you mention Off the Hook Sports. Dynasty Pools and Spas. DynastyPoolsandSpas.com. John Calipari, Lane Kiffin, do they remind you of each other? Never they reminded me of each. They reminded me of each other when Tennessee hired Lane Kiffin in two thousand nine. Okay, all right. And and the funny part about that is, remember that re remember back in the day, and it's funny because he got a lifetime contract. But remember there was talk that people tried to compare Calipari to Nick Saban for a while, which was the dumbest, historically most transcendently yeah. stupid comparison in the history of all comparisons a guy that hates the process has figured out a way around the process as opposed to a guy that does love the process by the way loves the process. does caleb look like stefan from saturday night live that poll question got yes no doubt 43 percent of the vote sort of got 43 percent of the vote big richard petty fans on board no way gets 12 percent of the vote so you don't look like Stefan. New question, which is on board. Would you rather golf with, because it is the Masters week, and that's a pretty cool event. Would you rather golf with Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, John Calipari? You have to pick one. He's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. Hang tight. Two minutes off the hook sports. And I'll tell you why. There's reason to be concerned with Tennessee's basketball program and the fact that they seem to be losing transfer portal players like I lose golf balls at Augusta. Stay tuned. Two minutes with Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker off the Hook Sports. Oh, in its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. If we wouldn't put our family in it, we're not going to put their family. If you're going to say that you're doing the best work in Knoxville, now saying it's one thing, producing it and providing it's another. The largest family-owned collision center in Knoxville is Joe Newbert Collision Center. Hi, I'm Rick Terry, and we at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs pride ourselves in the highest quality craftsmanship from a family-owned business here in Knoxville for over 35 years. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we also take pride in being an affordable option for all your game day accessories, especially those fire opals. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we want to be your jeweler every day and especially on game day. Go Vols! Hi, Mike Davis here with City Heating and Air, reminding you to always dare to compare. Our team provides quality local heating and air service, installation, and maintenance across East Tennessee. We use only the best equipment like American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning for your residential, new construction, or commercial needs. Honesty, dependability, and customer satisfaction have been the cornerstones of our business since 1961. City Heat and Air. There's your pair. Welcome to Ray Varner Ford in Clinton, where every turn meets new possibilities and every mile celebrates cutting edge innovation. Elevate your journey with our pre-owned selection of quality vehicles 
2021 Ford Mustang 5.0 GT 33540. 2021 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali 4x4 46980. 2022 Ford Expedition King Ranch 4x4 67550. Local you trust? Pre owned vehicles you can afford. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. Uh, who's this guy? Hello, wizard. The Dave Hooker Show, Who? a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave Hooker. With Stefan, I'm big old forehead looking guy. He's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. As we get loaded up on the program, we'll get your thoughts, your comments this day in Tennessee sports history. Also, Jonas Adu decides to bid the Vols Adu. Been waiting to use that one. And we will get into a recap of uh, spring camp. And which Vol would you want to golf with, by the way? which that to some extent is being answered on the message board now because you can vote on our poll question, which is what again, Caleb Calhoun? Uh, it is which vol would you most want to golf with? You just said it. Since it's no, it's not. Question. It's not. That's not it yet. Oh, okay. It's the, ori- it's the original poll question is what you're saying. Okay. The original. No, poll not question. the Stefan one. We've changed. Oh, Sorry, who would you rather golf with? Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, John Calipari. Okay, Lane I want to get Kiffin's the results winning. on that. Hold on, I want the results. It's brought to you by Quality Tire Pro. The Everly family has been serving Chattanooga since 1957. All major brands of tires, full service automotive brakes, alignments, oil changes, and more. All work is covered by a nationwide warranty. Some Cherokee Boulevard stopped by and say, off the hook, sports said, hey, Bo. Just say, hey, Bo, right there on Cherokee Boulevard or go to Quality Tire Pros in Chattanooga for all of your car service work. All right, so who are the three options? John Calipari, Nick Saban, and Lane Kiffin. And there was an obvious sensor. Right, so I'm being a little bit, uh, I don't know. What would the word be? Funsies? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe funsies. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Ro- which, Arkansas fans go to roast us for saying that on Twitter too. For, yeah, just gonna be like, you guys said the word funsies. We're gonna make fun of you now. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But again, they, they pay for really it. hurts our feelings, Something. guys. You're hurting myself. Chicken, chicken, chickens and pies. Okay, would you rather golf with Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, John Calipari? Lane Kiffin wins. Is it because of the women, or is it because of the insight? Or it was because of the mysteriousness around Lane Kiffin, because people have trouble pegging him. You know what I mean? I think, like, yeah, same, same. I think Lane Kiffin. I think people mistake the social media Lane Kiffin for the real Lane Kiffin, because quite honestly, the real Lane Kiffin is not as entertaining as he is on social media. You know that, Dave. Like, he's kind of socially quiet a little bit. I don't know if he'd be that fun on the golf course. I think he'd be a little awkward. So he, he honestly, he's like the Elon Musk of co- of college football. Like, cause Elon Musk is like just trolls people on Twitter all day, but he's kind of socially awkward when you're around him. I think Lane Kiffin is that for college football. So for me, it's between John Calipari and Nick Saban. And honestly, John Calipari would just annoy me so much by having to outsmart me with everything he said. I'd be like, oh, I hit it straight. He's like, well, you know, you hit it actually with the curve and it went this way and that way because that's what John Calipari does. So by default, I'm going to go Nick Saban. I'd like to go Lane just to kind of say, if if he's honest and he's going to have a couple of the truth serum in him, he's going to talk some trash. Uh, that's that's certainly what I would I would take. Um, and by the way, I, somebody give me a hard time for my Twitter uh, uh, avatar bio. I'm living in the past. I can't get it to change. I tried several times to get it to change, but I just can't figure out what I'm doing there. All right, Jonas Adu enters the transfer portal. He's not the first fall. Should Tennessee be concerned? Should Tennessee fans be concerned? As a matter of fact, somebody texted me this morning and said, are we going to have any players left to play basketball? And I said, I don't know if you will or not, but right now Tennessee's had the portal be uh, the topic of conversation. And I guess I was – Surprised by some, not surprised by others. What do you make of the rundown to this point, Caleb? Well, we've spoken about Awaka, DeLeon. So DeLeon and um, DJ Jefferson, Freddie DeLeon and DJ Jefferson were expected uh, because I know that they love Cameron Carr. 
Toby Awaka was shocking, but it did seem a little more like Rick Barnes was going to play a little small ball and just Awaka didn't fit. Jonas Adu shocked the heck out of me. And I thought this makes no sense. Barnes has been, Barnes was the one defending Adu after he played so poorly against Purdue earlier in the year. And he's been constantly saying Jonas Adu is going to be one of his great development projects of all time. And it's going to be incredible. This, so this is why, this isn't a guy that Barnes nudged into the portal. He willingly went. And no, but I'm going to say this. And you gave me a weird look when we, I think we were doing a post game show after an NCAA tournament. When I said that, may, oh, it was after the Purdue game. I said, that may just be what Adu is. So I don't think he was nudged in the tournament, but I think that performance was a two by four on the camel's back of, hey, is this guy tough enough to play SEC basketball, in particular for a coach that's so demanding as Rick Barnes? And I think both parties, Barnes and Adu, got their answer that night. So I don't think he was nudged out, but I think both people came to a meeting of the minds that may not be the end-all, be-all that, that they wanted it to be. Now, I agree with Elias, too. I always wonder about NIL issue. Does some guy tell him, hey, you're not going to have to play defense against Zach Eady. I'm going to make you a superstar, and I'm going to pay you uh, $250,000. I always wonder about that, especially with basketball players. I don't, I, I don't know what his personal issue, what his personal life is. I don't know what he's dealing with his family. But in terms of his professional prospects, Jonas Adu just made the biggest mistake of his life. I, I totally agree. I think you've got a mentor and, there. It would be the equivalent of you or I having, I don't know, pick pick a name uh one of the greatest broadcasters of all time and he's got that guy to lean on and learn from is it going to be fun along the way no but do you think grant williams looks back on his time at tennessee and says that wasn't as fun as i wanted it to be heck no no he looks as a matter of fact he talks about how intense barnes was and how tough it was on him but he's so thankful for it that's why he's an nba player this was a huge mistake by jonas adu rick barnes wanted to develop him and this is what happened. I'm just going to say it. I think Jonas Adu played soft against Purdue. He got mentally taken out of the game. And then he's mentally soft, so he got wrecked on Vol Twitter. And he saw Vol Twitter come at him, and he couldn't handle that Vol Twitter was coming at him. So he bolted in the portal. I, I, I think it's that level, of being, that level of mentally weak. And he bolted instead of trying to toughen up, and work with the coach and Rick Barnes, who, again, I still say I don't know if Rick Barnes is ever the coach that can win you a national title because of his development of players. But he does develop players. And he was going to develop Jonas Adu. But see, here's the moment that I think you and I differed on our opinion of Adu. Like, I'd seen that body language before. And why it had some success, especially shooting from the elbow, and that changed Tennessee's offense at times. I just didn't have long-term faith in him. I think you did. I turned out to be right in this one, but goodness knows I, I'm wrong a million times. I just didn't have a lot of faith in him for whatever reason, just body language and the whole nine yards. Hey, yes, but that's because he was soft. I feel like you can maybe develop mental toughness. I, just right, to give you a quick... I, I thought he was soft before then, I guess is the point I'm making. To give you a quick example, just, just to bring this up, because, I, you know, I've because you can develop toughness. And a great example of this is the story of the bad boy Pistons and the Jordan rules wasn't about Michael Jordan. It was about Scottie Pippen because they knew Scottie Pippen was too mentally soft to be able to take over the game if they took Jordan out of the game. Well, well Scottie Pippen. Yeah, there was. Scottie Pippen was not, unlike Jonas Adu, he couldn't just hit the portal. He wasn't a free agent. He was under contract, so he was stuck with the Bulls. So he was just forced to get better. And guess what? He got mentally tougher. And because he got mentally tougher, the Bulls became dominant. I mean, can that's I share, really what happened. Can I share this with you? This sure. is this is from my basketball source, and I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read it straight from my source, who gives me some great basketball info. So I guess we're gonna be hitting the portal pretty hard. The only problem with that is Coach Barnes' system's not built for a lot of portal players. I don't pretend to know hoops as well as you, Caleb. I don't pretend to know hoops as well as that guy that's texting me. That I can't tell you who it is, but. Let me ask you, what does he mean by that? I think I know, but I think it's the fact that you need to be in this offense or you need to be in this system for a year or two before you really start to blossom, correct? That's what it's meant. I think it is. 
And you I can think, totally disagree with it if you want. Yeah, I, I think that's a, I think that's a misread on Barnes. And the reason I think that's a misread is because if you look at Barnes's track record, his teams have miserably failed with one and done players in the past. That does not mean that you have to be in the system for a few years. The problem is one and done players are just too immature to play for Barnes at the time. You get a portal guy that's a veteran. Yeah, they could be a one and done, but they're a veteran. So they may actually be much more mature to play for Barnes and they could thrive in the system. Dalton Connect was one and done. I think he worked out pretty good, guys. So I, I think yeah, that's the, what SD Scout guys is saying as well, uh, who who follows South Carolina. See, Arkansas and Kentucky fans, we can be nice to all kinds of fans. We love uh, different fans. Yeah, dog first connect, of all, yeah. Arkansas, Kentucky fans, if you think we're biased to Tennessee, you don't know us. We've gotten a lot of hate from Tennessee fans on our show over yeah, the years. Course, quite a bit. So, well, I think this is going to be one of those – instances and we've all got those in our lives right where we look back and you kind of regret it and i think jonas adu one day when he's 30 35 and his career's wrapping up maybe it's in europe or wherever it is because i think he's good enough to play at that level don't you oh yeah yeah i think he'll look back and say man i should should have done the hard thing should have stuck with rick barnes because he was really helping me um i hope that's not the case i hope he does fantastic just like i hope same Joe Milton, as a matter of and, fact. But, by the way, no, I, I, agree. I agree. And Dave and I are very, we're not like, oh, stick with the program and commitment and loyalty. No, it's about what's best for you. But Rick Barnes was what's best for Jonas Adu. For, Jonas Adu. for instance. No, like there are 15,000 quarterbacks that needed to get the heck out of Dodge. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> He's on our show. I'm going to say it. When Buzz Peterson was hired, Ron Slay should have got the heck out of Dodge. And he should have gone to <laughs> he should have gone and played for Tom Izzo. And he won't, he may not like me saying that. Uh, I love Ron, but I think that I, I think he was stuck in a bad situation his last couple of years and a and a heck of an all-American player stuck in that situation. And that may be reason enough for us to have him on uh one more time. Uh as oh, we, Michael Jordan. But he got to play. He I wonder if Michael Jordan ever came around. We could ask him that. Um when he yeah, because Michael played. Jordan was around the program all the time because Buzz Peterson was just and all, really great. Also, friend. Tony Harris never should have committed to Tennessee because Jerry Green wasn't the right coach for him. And you know that, Dave. You talked about it a lot. Um, Jerry Green wasn't the right coach. But Rick Barnes is the right coach for Jonas Adu. And unless Tom Izzo takes Jonas Adu, which, by the way, ain't happening. Tom Izzo ain't taking Jonas Adu. Unless he does, I'm, I'm going to say he made a mistake. Now, if he goes to Michigan State, Dave, we stand corrected. But he's not going to Michigan State. Let's talk some practice brought to you by our friends at Dynasty Pools and Spas. Four Downs brought to you by Dynasty Spas, the most comfortable spas made in the United States of America, right here in East Tennessee. Drop in for the all-new showroom in Athens, Dynasty Spas, perfect for all four seasons. Four Downs, presented by Off the Hook Sports. All right, so let's get to it, Coop. What do people need to do if they want to take part in the program, especially Arkansas fans? Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. Coop, what down is it for Arkansas fans? Can lose track of what down it might be. Coop here, first down. The best story in Tennessee's football practice that does not involve the University of Arkansas is what, Caleb? It's the standout performances of Nico of uh, Mike Matthews and Boo Carter, and I was high on them from the start. I, in my mind, am just thinking, unless the coaches are pulling a Butch Jones, which they consistently told us they were high on guys that they weren't, then I think there is a legitimate reason to believe that these two guys are going to be incredible weapons going forward. I'm going with Dante Thornton. I think he's going to be the comeback player of the year, and I think you would have to give me this, that compared to a freshman, you're much more likely to play in Josh Heupel's system, having a little bit of playing time. I think Thornton got overwhelmed last year by people I've talked to. I think that he should have never been put in the slot, which was a mistake that we'll look back on in about a year from now and say, eh, it wasn't a great decision by Josh Heupel there. But I think it's I think it's Thornton. I think he's the best story because we were pretty darn hard on him last year, especially you, Caleb. They just called him out. I mean, goodness. Wow. How dare me call people out for the way they play? <laughs> Cooper Mays here. Second down. Especially a guy who's getting about three quarters of a K to play college football. But you didn't hear me say that. All right. So second down is this, and that is 
the player you're most excited about other than Nico? I think I just answered my own question, Dante Thornton, but I could go a close boot harder if you want to go in that direction as well, Caleb. I'm more excited about Mike Matthews. I think the coaches had it in their head that they wanted Boo Carter to work out. So I'm not saying he's not working out, but it, they pushed Wait him, a second. You've answered Mike Matthews for two questions, and third down will be this. Tennessee center Cooper Mays here. Third down. What newcomer are you the most excited <laughs> Caleb? Is that going to be Mike, Mike Matthews? Matthews. Mike Matthews. Matthews, the third Esquire Jr., the second. Matthews dash the second. Yeah, no, it's Mike Matthews. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm most excited about Mike Matthews because here's the thing. They had incentive to push and prop up Boo Carter. They are going to give him every reason to succeed, right? Because they needed help in the secondary. They didn't need that at receiver. They had depth at receiver. So mm. Mike Matthews standing out to them, I don't think they were trying to make Mike Matthews stand out. I think he just stood out because they kept okay, talking yes about no. him. Yes and no. You had snaps that had to be taken up because Brew McCoy was beat up, right? Yes. That okay. is true. There's an opportunity to look better. I want to ask you this, and I'm going to give you a chance to think about it. Because it's hard for me to quantify what Boo Carter, a successful freshman year, would be. I could say 28 and a half tackle over under. I could say two and a half interceptions. But it's really hard to quantify a strong safety and what he's going to be. You just kind of have to watch and see if he's good. I mean, you knew Eric Berry was great. You didn't have to look at the stat sheet after, but he did pretty good in those two. Yeah, so, and Larry Slade still started Gerard Parrish over him the first game. Yes. So this is more quantifiable, the guy that you're choosing, and that's Mike Matthews. So what's a su successful season? Give me receptions. Give me also receiving yards, and it's brought to you by Sports Treasures, carrying over 5 million sports treasures. And so much more follow on Facebook for the best sports memorabilia daily updates. Sports Treasures TN, Sports Treasures TN. So what down, Coop? All SEC center Cooper Mays here, fourth down. All right, so ask you just uh, simply this. What does Matthews have to do on the field to make you right and me wrong? Because I'm going to take Boo Carter as best newcomer, despite the things that you just said, just totally, absolutely attacking his character. I did not attack Boo. By the way, I was the Boo Carter defender when, so for you Arkansas were... fans, for Arkansas fans who were new on here, we had a bunch of Colorado fans coming at us in December because we said Boo Carter's not flipping. And they're like, no, you don't know recruiting. Boo Carter's going to flip and we know things. And we just learned about college football because Deion Sanders coaches in Colorado. And we had the whole like, state of Arkansas until Caleb went voice on him. All right. So, <laughs> um, so <laughs> Caleb, what does Matthews have to do? 300 yards receiving, 24 catches. I think Matthew, 500. I'll go 500. 500 Whoa. yards receiving. 500. Whoa, 500 because yards here's, receiving. Here's why, as a here's why even, if he, even if he's not a starter, there's going to be a, it's, I think you're going to see 2022 all over again. Remember how much mop-up duty there was in 2022, Dave? I mean, Squirrel White had almost 500 yards in 2022. He's not going to have 500 yards. What? Right 500? Want to bet? Want to bet? Let's go. Let's go. You suck. Yeah. <laughs> Jackass. Usually play that uh, except for special. Okay. So I got I wanted to I'll put that bet down right now. I no, I'm not gonna bet against somebody I cover. That's that's a hard and fast rule. So I can't do that. But if I did, it'd brought be brought to you by Bet US. Yeah, certainly. Okay. So we let let me break down a couple other things from screen that stood out just real quick. I mean, I you realize he is going to be the freshman receiver. I mean, he's gonna be if, if he catches Dave is so old school. If he's he catches five hundred yards. Develop. No, if he catches 500 yards, he's going to be all American, freshman all American. You do realize that. Are you willing to? No, with that? Squirrel White wasn't. Squirrel White wasn't freshman all American, and he got close to 500 yards. I guarantee a Squirrel White was somewhere. Okay, go ahead with your point. Uh, well, yeah, just look it up real quick. Okay, so I want to let I wanted to talk, Dave, with you a little bit about other positions real quick. So I wanted to know your thoughts. Um, I think one of the things that stood out is that Tennessee does not have any answer at running back right now. Is that fair to say? Because Cam Seldon got hurt and it doesn't look like anybody else could play. And Peyton Lewis was not on the team yet for the spring because of just his, his high school calendar doesn't allow that. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's disturbing too that Peyton or not Peyton, that Cam Seldon wasn't, wasn't able to go because he needed it. He needed a lot. By the way, uh, Squirrel White last year had 12 games uh, at slot 64 receptions, 764 yards. But as a freshman, he played in 12 games, 
He had 30 catches for 481 and two touchdowns. And was so, not freshman All American. I'm checking that. He should and have. He was, been. Was, he, he, he was a reserve. Flirting, he, if you're flirting with 500 yards, I would think you would be freshman All American. What do I know? You're coaching like it's the 90s and the 2000s, and you know you only run however many plays a game. I don't see where he's listed freshman All SEC. Anyway, go ahead with your. your Yes, because he wasn't. Because it was all mop up duty. Tennessee was dropping 60 at halftime in 2022. So, and and Hypo would bring his back. I mean, as we've talked about a lot this past year, they had trouble pulling away from teams. Dave, they were very challenged. In that regard, in, in 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 getting big leads on teams, and that was the problem. I think, yeah. So I think if you were going to say biggest concern, it's running backs. What about you? Yeah, biggest concern is running backs. I don't think there's any question about that. You would love for Cam Selden to just have grabbed that job and been done with it, but that hasn't been the case. My concern is that he hasn't done it twice, two off seasons in a year. He's not going to do it this year, and he's. Didn't do it last I year. saw that. I all I need was all I needed was that third and one run he took in the Citrus Bowl. There's no way you could ever develop as a running back when you couldn't see that hole and, and take the wrong way. That that's I'm oh. sorry. That that's not that is the Trent Richardson. That is the Trent Richardson moment for him. Um yeah. It was that was just that was just straight up embarrassing. I gotta be honest. And I don't think from that from that point on, I, I just didn't believe in him. Yep. So, I'm wrong with you. Four Downs is brought to you by our good friends at Dynasty Pools and Spas. We're here, you know, the best thing about Dynasty Pools and Spas is that they've got it all taken care of. What does that mean? Well, you stop by their showroom and check out their fantastic selection of top-notch spas in that showroom in Athens. Make your pick and get ready. Because Dynasty Pools and Spas delivers within 125 miles of that location in Athens, that fantastic showroom. They've got the cover, the cover lifts, steps, chemicals, and everything you need. Delivery at no extra charge. They're just down the road in Athens. You pick the spa you want, and it'll be there for you. Oftentimes discounted with military and first responders discounts. Also blemish models, or just mention Off the Hook Sports. That's Off the Hook Sports for $500 off. There's a discount for you on spas made right here in East Tennessee. Support local. Dynasty Pools and Spas also has the best chemicals for you and your spa and your pool. No fillers, just the chemicals made right here in East Tennessee. Support local. Dynasty Pools and Spas, $500 off if you mention Off the Hook Sports. $500 off if you mention Off the Hook Sports. Dynasty Pools and Spas. Dynasty Pools and Spas.com. In its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. If we wouldn't put our family in it, we're not going to put their family in it. If you're going to say that you're doing the best work in Knoxville, now saying it's one thing, producing it and providing it's another. The largest family-owned collision center in Knoxville is Joe Newbert Collision Center. Hi, I'm Rick Terry, and we at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs pride ourselves in the highest quality craftsmanship from a family-owned business here in Knoxville for over 35 years. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we also take pride in being an affordable option for all your game day accessories, especially those fire opals. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we want to be your jeweler every day and especially on game day. Go Vols! Hi, Mike Davis here with City Heating and Air, reminding you to always dare to compare. Our team provides quality local heating and air service, installation, and maintenance across East Tennessee. We use only the best equipment like American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning for your residential, new construction, or commercial needs. Honesty, dependability, and customer satisfaction have been the cornerstones of our business since 1961. City Heat and Air. Welcome to Ray Varner Ford in Clinton, where every turn meets new possibilities and every mile celebrates cutting edge innovation. Elevate your journey with our pre-owned selection of quality vehicles. 2021 Ford Mustang 5.0 GT, 33540. 2021 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali 4x4, 46980. 2022 Ford Expedition King Ranch 4x4, 67550. Local you trust, pre-owned vehicles you can afford. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones. 
Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, thanksjones.com. You're listening to The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. The internet is full of pictures of each and every one of you. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off The Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Is there nothing you people can't do? Also available on offthehooksports.com. Appreciate uh, Hogs Mafia commenting no Final Four, seven conference championships, which is one of the lowest in the conference. Poverty. That is true that uh, Tennessee is struggling in that regard. We uh, are certainly happy to report on the Vols as we are your official University of Arkansas Razorback streaming show live with you. Live with you at 9 o'clock Central, East, each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. We join they, you each and every weekday. They think we're like we, we're like some hardcore Tennessee fans. Like, we cover Tennessee, but we don't take it personal if you would. We're not running attacks on you, Arkansas, as benefits of Tennessee. I mean, I'm we're getting roasted already on Twitter this morning because we said that Danny White has questionable hiring processes at Tennessee. So, yes, but I, you, I mean, you are getting roasted and rightly well, so. Is, I mean, what is some uh, of the best one? Huh? Well, no, I mean, you tend to take a shot at people. All right. So let's let's get to uh, this day in Tennessee sports history, which can be a little bit loosely based, if we may say so. So O.J. Simpson passed away yesterday. What do we have with the O.J. Simpson there? Yeah, this day in Tennessee history is going to be an O.J. tie because um. By the way, did you remember? You may be too young to remember this, but do you remember when they brought out his the hat that they found? The the hat that they found at the at the uh, scene of the crime. Do you remember that they showed I it do to not, him? I, yeah, I, I was six. I was five. I don't even think I was allowed to. Well, watch it that was kind of it was kind of obvious he did it when he goes, "Oh look, where'd you find that? I've been looking for my lucky stabbing hat." And by the way, he had ordered like how many of those gloves that he had. Like, I think he had ordered like a stash of those gloves. It was, yeah, it was. Again, only if the LAPD didn't choose to have a racist run the case who admits he plants evidence. I mean, they, they, I blame the prosecution for the OJ case. They 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 did a horrendous job prosecuting that case. Um, but uh okay, so I wanna by the way, the Twitter report is going insane. Now we got Travis saying who takes it first in all state of Walmart employees calling us a poverty program. Here we go. And I'll tell you about the GMC Sierra brought to you by Ray Varner Ford and Clinton here momentarily. But first, Caleb, this day in Tennessee sports history. So uh this is going to be a, a, an homage to O.J. Simpson because Tennessee fans owe him because Tennessee erroneously, stupidly, ridiculously claims 1967 as one of their official national championships. It's the dumbest right. national title claim. All it's right. right up there with some of the dumbest. It's right up there with UCF in 2017. You're going to make, make O.J. relate to the University of Tennessee football program. I'm excited. Yes, this was the this was Dewey Warren senior year. Doug Dickey head coach that team. They lost their first game to UCLA twenty to sixteen. Won the rest of them until the bowl game. But remember, national champions were declared before the bowl game there this time. So they finished the season nine and one. UCLA was seven zero and one ahead of their last game of the season, and then they played USC and lost twenty one to twenty thinks in large part to the scoring and the work done by OJ Simpson, who I believe had two touchdowns in that game because USC won. Tennessee was able to finish number one in the Litkin house poll at the end of that year, which is why they claim 1967 as a national championship season. Yes. And did you, did you know that when O.J. Simpson went to the Buffalo Bills, his offensive line was called the Electric Company? Were they really? I did not know that. They were. I just uh, figured I'd throw that out there. They didn't stab anybody. That was O.J. Well, well I mean, <laughs> the, it's, it, it's I mean, because, like, come on, don't lump them together with a stabber. Well, I mean, they no, they they protected him and kept him in shape because O.J., I've just read busy about stabbing people. He was... 
he was one of the least hit running backs in football. He he probably didn't he kind of pioneer the whole don't get touched as a running back thing because he ran behind such an elite. Line. He was stabbing people. Oh, well, that's why he was able to because he was avoiding all the hits. Right. <laughs> Did you know the one thing that uh, the uh, the the waiter said uh, right before OJ attacked him? What? He said, "Oh, look, you're OJ Simpson." <sighs> <laughs> Which ball would you want to play golf? Guys, with? okay, it's not about OJ, but we maybe we should dial it back. Dave. Two people did die because of OJ Simpson, and all and the And, and, and listen, he, he didn't deserve to walk the, the face of free man from that point forward. Walk the face. Yeah, of the he 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 didn't. He didn't. Yes. He was. By the way, I will say, um, his uh, you know, his lawyer's ex-wife's ex-husband, now wife, Caitlyn Jenner, tweeted at OJ Simpson yesterday. Good riddance. Because she was friends with Nicole, which By the is way, kind of funny. Because Caitlyn Jenner killed somebody and got away with it too. Well, no, yeah, people don't know that. Mean to. But by, uh, by oh, the okay. way, uh, all all my jokes are based off Norm Macdonald. Me drinker said Norm Macdonald went at OJ a lot. Norm Macdonald. I saw a. I love it. Thanks to Stacey Oliver. So yes, I'm I'm completely ripping all of that off. I Dave, I watched. I never watched it at the time, but in '98, I watched the Norm Macdonald hosting the Yespies, and I didn't realize that he actually made a joke with Charles Woodson there because he said, "Oh, Charles Woodson won the Heisman, proving that you can play any position to win it." And he said, "But if you kill your wife, I'll take it away." His best joke didn't make it though. Later, and he said, "Oh, we got a uh, John Elway here. He said, uh, won a won a couple of Super Bowls and." Uh, and maybe maybe you can afford to get something done about those teeth. Oh God! <laughs> <All right. laughs> Which ball would you most want to golf with? We're going to open that up to the message board and get your thoughts. Mine is going to be a guy that I was fortunate enough to visit with is Doug Atkins. I would give anything to be able to go back and get that audio. I can't; it's gone forever. But it was thirty minutes of an interview, eight minutes of cussing that I had to cut out that I would give anything to be able to go back. And you know, he was talking about the George Hallises of the world, the Jim Browns of the world. So he was going back, back. And it was, I had no really idea since that he went that far back, even though I should have Caleb, because I was doing these interviews in the 2000, uh, 2000 area uh, era, 2005, somewhere in there. And I didn't realize he was, he was that old. So it was, uh, it was pretty special. What about you? Masters weekend, who would you play golf with? I've always said Johnny Majors. Johnny Majors was so outgoing. He knew history like so well. I've heard him in interviews. I feel like I could just talk and I feel like I could just talk with him and listen to his stories because I love history. Johnny Majors was a student of history. Um, and also I like to party. And I heard Johnny Majors likes to party. So. He can drink he can drink some booze back in the day. I, you made a great selection with Johnny Majors because as as a matter of fact, you couldn't have made a better selection because as much as you love history, he absolutely knew history like nobody else I'd ever been around. Like could go back to the 1910s and recall stuff. He didn't need a Wikipedia. He didn't need an internet. He was just able to do stuff like that. It was absolutely phenomenal and amazing how sharp he was even in his his later years maybe somebody called him and unintentionally informed him informed him that philip fulmer was the new athletic director and you got to see how sharp-witted that man could be at that very moment maybe that person's on this very show wait you were the one who let him know yeah. tell me what he said tell me what he said i gotta know dave I can't tell you any of that because he specifically wow. said, now none of that's on the record, right? And I said, well, technically you're supposed to say that beforehand, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. But he was not wow. happy. He was not very happy with that at all. That I mean, would, the guy that got you fired would eventually be the athletic director. He, the you know, I mean, it, he didn't live to see it, but quite honestly, like, it's funny because Fulmer won the national title, but I feel like now, given his tenure as athletic director, Johnny Majors holds a place a little bit higher in Tennessee lore than Philip Fulmer does, doesn't he? You know, there was something about Johnny Majors, guys, and I'm curious on the message board what this is. He always kind of carried your heart a little bit more than Philip Fulmer, and I can't really explain that. Because maybe, he was outgoing. Well, and maybe I'm not the best person to explain it because so much of my coverage of Fulmer was professional and I was around him. But it was like when you grew up in Knoxville, Johnny Majors was an extension of your high school coach. 
it felt yeah. like that. And Phil, Philip Fulmer never felt like an extension of your high school coach. And I can't explain that. Well, it's it's and, 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 and it's what Knoxville media or local media was with majors. What you're talking about is how national media in general is with coaches. I mean, let's be honest. There were things that you can buy. I, I say this with coaches all the time. Unless you're Nick Saban and you're winning championships. So Nick Saban gives you good quotes too, but as a coach, you can buy a lot of good press and good favor if you're good with the media, right? And I mean, Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno were masters at that. I mean, yeah. again, Joe Paterno didn't even coach, but he would do every interview possible, which was why everybody covered for him while he was covering for other more horrendous things. Um, Bobby Bowden, again, could say just was so honest. I say that about Steve Spurrier. So could you imagine Dave Deep being a media guy? We should talk. I mean, I want to think about it from John Adams to Jimmy Hines' perspective. Imagine going from covering Johnny Majors every week to covering Phil Fulmer. Imagine right. how much mo more pulling teeth that is. I had to be massively different, but Philip Fulmer was pretty open with the media. I mean, what you see nowadays is not what Philip Fulmer was. So it's even worse he didn't, now. No, but what way, I mean is a couple of people I do I do want to give a shout out to a couple of people who mentioned majors and Kaffa goes second. Uh, and Travis brings up a good one. It's because he was a Tennessee hometown star. Probably that was a big factor why you looked at him as being the coach. And uh, Cafago, why would you have Cafago high on the list, uh, Caleb? Or would you? Well, I, 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 I know, I know who George, George Cafago was. I know nothing about his personality, so I can't really speak on that, guys. I'm sorry, but well, I'll tell you what, Gus Manning. Um, I have had the opportunity to visit with him on several occasions and he would have turned a hundred years old this summer. And Gus Manning who passed away was it earlier this year or late last year was an absolute treasure. And you always knew when Gus thought you're okay. Cause he would start a sentence. What's that boy. <laughs> and you knew you're okay with him. Otherwise he was kind of wondering about you a little bit. So that would be a very good one. I guess the obvious, obvious one, if we want to pick, guys that are alive or dead would have to be general Nealon. I mean, there was no full-time sports reporter to ask him how scared he was to go serve in the military, how that may have been a difficult decision, how he broke that to his family. I mean, that stuff wasn't written back then. So he'd have to rank right up there with yours and, and mine too, Caleb. Nealon's place in history is more underrated than you guys know. Um, I, I totally agree. I can remember, not to interrupt you, but I can remember them doing the greatest coaches in college football history, and it traveled around from place to place. So at one time it was right outside Neyland Stadium, and they had Paul Bear Bryant, and they had all these guys on there, and Paterno, and they had the top 12, and he wasn't even mentioned in, like, the honorables. Yeah, and that's crazy. He had to end two set two stints in his prime of coaching. And let's let's – so for the, for World War II historians, here's a random point that people need to know about. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, the reason Hitler and the Germans wanted that was because they thought that that way the U.S. would be distracted fighting in the Pacific so Germany could deal with invading Russia and not have to use supplies to its western side with England because that wouldn't be too much. What they didn't realize was that the United States was so had such a loaded up military and so many troops ready to go that they were able to fight on two fronts in the Pacific and in Western Europe. The reason they were able to fight on two fronts was because Nealon left coaching Tennessee a year before Pearl Harbor happened and worked with the government to train massive numbers of troops to get ready to go. Nealon was the one training them. He's the yeah, reason he that the U.S. was ready to fight in Europe. Let's all remember, he didn't do the John Adams thing where he showed up and pushed some pencils around in the army because he got drafted. That's what John did. <laughs> wow. Nebraska, Nebraska was completely safe from all Nazi invasion because of John Adams. Well, <laughs> that's, where he was, that's where he was stationed. He'll joke about it more than I will, okay. Caleb. So well, I'm not making fun of it. But he will well, admit well, that he protected Nebraska from any sort of Japanese or Nazi invasion. Well, Nealon never Actually, saw combat. The it was the Vietnam War. Sorry. Well, Neil never saw in combat when he like in World War II. He was training troops, but he did. You're right in World War One, and but he was very valuable to what they were doing in World War II. I mean, he was training troops and had them ready to go, and that's what caught the Germans off guard was how ready they were. So yeah, General Neilan's up there. What about Mod? Can we just do modern real quick? Like, I got to think like players you covered. Who's somebody that's just like fun to golf with? Because I feel like you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of people that. I, I like wish John I knew Eric Berry a little bit better. 
Eric Berry would be good. I would do Josh Dobbs because I need his help. To, I need him to help me debunk all the stupid conspiracy theories on on the flat earthers that I see on Twitter all the time. And with that, and and from a news perspective, there's some guys that I would like to visit with that maybe wouldn't have the best things to tell me. Um, I'd like to visit with some of the guys that were a part of the coaching transition. I would like to have an open, honest, 100% honest conversation with the late Mike Hamels. You know, I, I think that's what we're assuming, right, when we're talking about a round of golf, that everybody's open and honest. Yes. You that's may not cool. like this because I know he doesn't like you, but he is a little <laughs> deep when he talks. Um, he, he can get a little deep. I, I'd golf with Arian Foster. It's not he like likes, but he does he like to talk. One, he was the one online from Arkansas calling me big forehead guy. Speaking of big forehead guy, Jimmy says golf with Peyton. For Caleb Calhoun, I'm Dave Hooker. This has been well, wait, what about who we who would we not golf with? Oh, by the way, we reset that question. Who would you not golf with? Uh you it comes down to Nick Saban Lane, John Calipari. Oh, I have yeah. no I have no need to golf with John Calipari. I would enjoy golfing with Nick Saban. I think Nick Saban would be the best. Yeah. Yeah. He's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. 